Living in this typical communist concrete block, you know, this, this high concrete houses, we have some of them in Europe here in Europe. He ended up walking around these houses, chanting and ringing the bell, illuminating the neighborhood. He gave up his job. He told his wife, you are actually a total illusion. <laughs> the children, he said, you are even greater illusion. And he renounced the world, chanting Hare Krishna. Well, in Czech Republic, usually the neighbor seeing such a figure walking around the block called either police and ambulance, which happened in Norsa. His wife completely disturbed. The children were crying, going, Father, what happened to you? And he was going, I love Krishna only. <laughs> you know, he was a big guy. You know? I remember him very well. So fortunately, after going through this, there was somebody around that was actually me. <laughs> who had some talk to his wife and she was crying and I told him well you see I am also Hare Krishna I am in the age of most, almost of your husband things are not staying the same just fade it out it's cool she did, she was actually a very pious lady she was coming from a Christian background but she was quite pious she had nothing against God and the idea like that but that her husband becomes like this, you know, walks around being bells around the neighborhood. That was really shocking. So, and uh, actually at that point it was impossible to talk to him. Impossible. And he was like, the mission has to be accomplished. You know, yeah. <laughs> so we waited out, waited out. <laughs> then slowly the family started to run out of money. Of course, he had to pick up some job again. And, uh, you know, and uh, finally I found an opportune moment to talk to him, explaining to him how Srila Prabhupada's life also was evolving. Srila Prabhupada was a household man for the majority of his life, trying to raise a family, where he naturally culminated the whole thing to the point he truly renounced and, you know, and accomplished something we cannot even dream about. So, uh, we start to listen a little bit. But nowadays he's just a happy grihasta, you know, in one sense. You know, he became actually, <laughs> he became so efficient in his job, you know, yeah. Because actually his motivation was not just to earn enough money to maintain the family. He wanted to earn more money so he can support preaching. So he became such a fierce insurance salesman and he got a metal reward from his company. You know, the best salesman of the year. <laughs> His wife was happy. She started to chant Hare Krishna. Actually, she's now this more enthusiastic almost like him. He became initiated by the Luna's one. The whole thing just evolved and stabilized in a kind of situation which is sustainable more long term. But naturally, when a new devotee comes, we tell him, hey, listen, this is the best program here. When he doesn't have a family, the only thing he has usually, a new bhakta has debts, you know, and uh, girlfriend. That's the only thing he has. Well, to renounce both is not so painful. The debts anyway, as I just learned to Krishna, my dear Krishna, he has all my debts. And the girlfriend, it depends. If she is favorable to Krishna consciousness, why to renounce her? And maybe she's not favorable, and usually, Bizoid, the young girls, they, they pretend to be favorable to keep the boy around, but then they realize he's, he's too serious and it's okay. Very good. The standard thing. Or they become even more Krishna conscious as him. You never know. They become more Krishna conscious, he drops out. You never know. There's something between the soul and Krishna. And ultimately, it depends how seriously they take Shiva Prabhupada's words. So Prabhupada had to experience all this and had to deal with this in his letters, guiding his disciples from one stage to another, bringing them closer and closer to Krishna. So this picture of Prabhupada was just kind of pushing something which actually you can never achieve. It's completely wrong. Prabhupada was very sensible and very understandable to the needs of the devotee. He, he never actually the situation is going to evolve so radically. First of all, I joined this movement, there was hardly anybody married. Everybody, and the oldest member was something 22 years old, and he 
everybody. So you can imagine what a movement it is. All Brahmachai, Sanyas, you know, hooray! You know, we quoted all these young Acharya. As soon as sort of sex appears on my mind, I spat on it. You know, we started going on Prabhupada and this regard, but maybe I shouldn't mention it. Walking with the sannyasis in the morning, it's recorded. Prabhupada goes in the Acharya. As soon as sorry all the sex appears in my mind, I spat on it. You can hear it, like it. Wow, that's convincing. That's really, that's really demonstrating. Anyway, <laughs> but this was again with those in the stage of sanyas. I can give you guarantee the same way Prabhupada could sit down and write a letter like this, encouraging somebody actually to get married. So he can stabilize in a certain level and progress step by step in Krishna consciousness. It's not easy to handle so many different people in so many different situations. The goal was always the same, that people stay in tune with Krishna consciousness. They come more and more close to Krishna. One comes from this situation, another one comes from this situation. He is now entangled like this, he is stuck like that. How to bring them down to close to Krishna? That's the challenge. So Prabhupada, that was another feature of his. He could handle such a vast variety of individuals. He could handle from a young boy, from a child. There are children, and the children are already. They were seeing Prabhupada as a grandfather. They didn't have any even a grandfather. The parents were devotees. The famous, most famous in their name was Saraswati. You know, a little girl who was so close to Prabhupada, traveling along with the parents, also where Prabhupada goes, she appears again and again in Prabhupada's you know, recordings. You can see it even on the recorded film footage, the little stars of Babi running around. And she had such a relationship with Prabhupada. Prabhupada would handle even her. Because, of course, he had children, he knew. Prabhupada was a well rounded personality who could handle people from all social ranks and you know Robert was his life was very public. He was not a retreat living yogi. He was a businessman most of his life. He knew so many people, he moved around, he knew. So the little Saraswati is special. They had kind of relationship. She saw him almost like a grandfather, not not a pure body or whatever, but could a little girl like this understand? So Saraswati had this special privilege, she could go straight out to Prabhupada and say, why do you have such a big mouth? And Prabhupada smiled with his big mouth and said, so I can put many sweets inside. <laughs> that was a really argument for Saraswati. She was like, wow, how many sweets he can put into that big mouth? Can I have such a small mouth? <laughs> you know, she had really something to think about her the whole day. They have constantly this kind of exchanges, you know, all the time. This famous exchange where the parents of Sarasvati that are having Darshan with Prabhupada, that so far I understood, I wasn't there. So, you know, so, and uh, she was very small, she was restless. As parents, you know, kids get restless when grown up people talk for too long, kids get very restless, and what are they talking about? You should have some play here, or give me something to eat, but this talking, what is this? So this Saraswari was on the level of the mother and they were speaking to Prabhupada in Zoom. And Saraswari was restless and, ah. and finally kind of the mother was listening, she lost the grip on the child, and the child flopped over and hit the head to the floor. And of course, as children do, they love to do that. They take a deep breath and run in, and they ruin the whole meeting completely. You know? So like it's your fault. You know, children always think, my pain is your fault. You are the cause of my pain. So, you know, so Saraswati was just about to, and then Prabhupada, he had these big eyebrows, you know. He raised the eyebrows and looked at her very seriously. And she was frozen. And then Prabhupada said, you hit what you had my floor. You broke my floor. And Saraswati was completely stunned watching the floor that is broken. <laughs> and completely forgot the pain. He completely knocked out her mind. Totally. 
And she completely forgot to cry and she forgot the pain. She was just watching the floor, this is broken, I broke with my head, his floor. <laughs> and then we the parents would converse and Prabhupada oh, continued the next second by the conversation and nothing happened. And these parents, they were looking at her going like, wow, Prabhupada can be a hundred kids, you know. <laughs> so this is a uh, very personal encounter. There was no situation Prabhupada was surprised by or, you know, or just shocked. He, he, you know, he was extremely experienced to handle all kinds of situations. And then you see his letters being embedded last Saturday, uh, last Friday, he heard how Prabhupada considered himself even being the son of his disciples. You know, being lovingly taken care by his disciples, like if they they would be his parents. That's a very, very personal understanding. You know, so this this becomes very, very personal. When this bond is established, that's true love in Krishna consciousness. You know, when this bond is established, then you can start to push. Then Prabhupada gave instructions which were beyond the understanding of the disciples completely. And they did it. Out of love for Prabhupada, and Prabhupada would say in his later portion before he left this planet, he was pushing us so much, he had a slogan, it was called double it. So whoever brought some achievement to him, Prabhupada I distributed 5,000 books. Prabhupada said double it. And they did double it. It was he was pushing to such a level. He wanted to do such a service which we can now sometimes we can do. So you can see how Prabhupada was lovingly and carefully involved with the lives of the disciples. That cannot be always copied, of course. I know if Zambra spiritual masses will not, not go that far. They were not tempered with the marriage of the disciples, they would say that's your problem. They may be at the best telling him maybe you should get married. Maybe you shouldn't. Sometimes it's just an idea. A temporal, you know, sentiment, which very easily goes away again. I remember uh, my brother, who was previously very much dominant in this Nordic region, preaching here. He had a policy when a brahmachari, a story about a student, really wanted to get married. He sent him on a tour, visiting all the grihastas and speaking to them, so he can find out what is ahead of him. It was like a he did, I saw him doing it several times. You know, this Brahmachari was telling him for one day, asked a couple and said, So, how is it? Usually, hearing nerves are inspiring news. Because those who are seriously married, they know it's not a walks rose garden. It's going to get tougher. <laughs> then he heard all the stories and all this honestly reporting Priyastas, you know, don't sin, it's not happening in Krishna consciousness. And the wife doesn't tell you why an idiot. They do. You know, and things like that. See the same Krishna consciousness, husband and wife. They're just chanting. And ah, oh, floating actually. You know, they're just chanting and floating. And then boop, the baby pop comes out. Boop, and then the baby's also floating and chanting. <laughs> you know. I mean, let's get serious. It's nothing what people don't face, what we don't face too. Of course not. It's the same thing. But there is another dimension to it. The Prabhupada got very upset when the reporter told him, why is this movement ruining feminism? Prabhupada got so upset. This movement ruining feminism? He said, we are making feminism. Because as you can see on these letters, Prabhupada was very concerned. But in a Krishna conscious way, that means not much of anything. Too much is always you can get overdosed. You know, most marriages are dying not because of too little, very, very rarely, but because of too much. Too much of everything. You cannot breathe anymore. People think, oh, I have to get some fresh air. I'm oh, married so long, I have to get some fresh air. No, very God should teach you no fresh air. You stay to it, this is your vow, there will be no divorce. That's your vow. And you promise in front of Krishna, I will never do this. The Sankarchan is very difficult. Because 
people are not trained on this, they don't have such a faith, and uh, they don't feel so obliged. And then they break out of it. So in the presence of Srila Prabhupada, yes, even these things were going on. But because everybody was so duty bound to Prabhupada and was so obliged to him, it wasn't easy to go off like this. You have to explain to Prabhupada why you did it, and you couldn't. And he was still falling down out of weakness. Prabhupada was merciful because it was of weakness. But when somebody make it deliberately and make a new philosophy out of it, then Prabhupada was ferocious, very ferocious, very right? So this is just some glimpses of that, how Prabhupada personally dealt with the devotees and how personal the nature of this movement is. There is some Maybe it's me. Oh, 
Maybe I know more as I saw. My God, maybe even I'm God. Then we are finished. Krishna goes and gave her a talk, very nice contribution here. You may hear just ma 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 Krishna said ma 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 But we will put now one blonde girl in the door in front of you and see what you will do. One blonde girl. And I get it. No, 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 no. Out. That's where the proof comes. No more shlokas. Because after all the shlokas, where is the, where is the realization? This day I heard from Sri Prabhupada, he said, it's not difficult to understand, to hear that we are not this body, but to understand it really, Prabhupada said, yogis are striving for this realization thousands of lifetimes. That's how difficult it is. To really understand the body. Some people get scared when they get the glimpse of it, what Prabhupada meant by really understanding. They say, oh no! Millions of lifetimes, what is this? No, Prabhupada said, you can. By the mercy of the spiritual master, you can. But don't say you can do it like this on your own, learning some things and that's it. You can repeat nicely. Prabhupada gave an example of a parrot. Parrot can also learn how to repeat very nicely. I know the devotees in Australia, in front of the temple, I heard they have a cage with a big parrot, this Ara, you know. And he is welcoming the guests, the horse and the feast. Hare Krishna! Chai Hare Krishna! Hare Bo, Hare Bo! You know, yeah. And guests go, okay, yes, Hare Krishna. He's a big preacher, the parrot. But you open the cage, grab his throat, he will go, ah! No chanting, nothing. Because he doesn't understand one thing what he's doing. He's just repeating the sound. So we should not be like that. Even Prabhupada said, parrot like repetition is still better as nothing. But it doesn't guarantee the ultimate success. And this was the personality of Prabhupada. He showed us this is for real. This is not just something you believe in. Believe you can whatever you want to believe. This is real. We are dealing here with philosophy and with knowledge which is real, which cannot be defeated, it's a fact. Starting with the fact that you will die. See, I don't believe in death. Yeah, believe, not believe. It doesn't matter, you will die anyway. Very practical philosophy. Hmm? Yeah. I would very much like to be convinced that it's a fact. That takes practice. Just stay around. That's all. That would be Just stay that around. would be awesome. You think you are in the ultimate shape? No. Ha. Huh. I will not have the pleasure to be so because by the time you will be in a different shape, I will be dead. Probably. But uh, there is another end of the waiting for you. Now you think that's me. Here, yes, that's me in the kitchen, that's me. Yes, that's you right now. But just stay around. I saw boys like you joining and becoming gurus in Krishna consciousness. I'm not saying you become a guru, but it's not impossible. I tell you, if you ever thought you were crazy, these gurus are a thousand times more crazy as you. And they became gurus in Krishna consciousness. One of the most prominent ones, when he joined, the devotees asked Prabhupada to do with him. And he said, well, maybe he should stay a little bit longer in this institution he gave him. Because they brought him back to the nut house. But in the nut house, they said, nah, he's not so crazy, he had not so much place. They kicked him out again, and he stayed in the nut. Later, he became a guru. So, this is movement, and this is a you don't see it now, I don't see it now. But Krishna can do anything with anybody. But we are so conditioned, you think, oh, it's me, I will be like this for my whole life. And, and I remember when I joined this movement, I was 18. 
not only I was operating with a little bit more lighter body, even my father got shocked when I came after 15 years in Krishna consciousness in a door. He said, you grew up really a lot, you know. What happened? I don't know. I used to be like him. A long, skinny boy. <laughs> I used to be in this shape, exactly like him, I can show you what else. Now today we were laughing with Mother Ashka when we visited Rupana Prabhu in a flat, that maybe when we come, us two, they have to change the doors. Because we are in such a shape that in our old flats we don't fit into the door, we have to go sideways like this. <laughs> Where did this came from? I'm not I'm eating one minor portion of the prasadam I used to eat when I was his age. That's what happens. Just the world change. But the fun is, I'm talking exactly the same thing I was talking when I was 18. No change there. Such a nice thing. You have to change one thing. I was preaching those days, yeah, not just worry. And today I can say the same thing. Of course, those days, I said it's very easy. No, I don't think that. Because I realized, oh, to be really not this body, it takes a little bit more. It's just to scream out of this body. I also saw that I was 18, I was incredibly enthusiastic. Yeah! I am so enthusiastic, I can hardly sleep. Yeah! Joy! Later I realized that this enthusiasm was very much powered by a mode of passion. And passion is always a beginning and always an end. That you realize at the end. And there's no chance with that passion. No chance! <coughs> and the devotees look at you and they go, he's not so enthusiastic anymore. <laughs> You go, <clears throat> okay, now I have to stay enthusiastic uh, in a kind of different way. <laughs> Can I just flash my muscles and start running? <laughs> That's, my Krishna coin doesn't change. Many of my brothers are telling me in my age, my God, I used to work like a clock. We were trained, you know, <clears throat> I didn't need even any alarm clocks. In the morning, and so it'd be nice if it's still going on like this. But some of my brothers, they are working pharmacies. <laughs> First thing, many of my brothers meeting me will say, "What kind of diet you are following? Is it okay? You know, uh, what kind? Of, uh, I have no diet. What? You have no diet?" Where is the medicine? I don't know why you medicine. Some of my girlfriends, they travel around, they have sweet cakes, they say, owls and big cakes. You, you can see if you have more visitors, you will see. They open and they spray the out around the room, you know, it smells strange. And, and they go, in, yes. You know, you know. <laughs> I feel incredibly healthy when I see them like this. <laughs> because my problems are quite minor in comparison to this. So you think the body will stay the same? Of course not. But as you are already realizing now, uh, it's kind of easy to remember Krishna in this kind of environment. And, and also it's nice to uh, be of some use, you know. We all want to be of some use. And